morning, it's cloudy and it might rain and I'm heading to Franklin, Indiana and going to my college. My, uh, one of my favorite professors who taught my media law class, which I use more than anything in my journalism career because people steal my shit. <laughs> so uh, yes, I worked in branding and copyright and um, I've had to do uh, uh, takedowns and things like that because uh, you know my creative work gets taken and used for profit. So I'm um, going to his retirement. We're having a dinner, uh, the Pulliam School of Journalism, where I went to journalism school in Indiana at this dinky little college in Franklin, which had like 900 students. Um, so my professor is retiring, and then my other favorite professor passed away last year from cancer, unfortunately. And uh, both of them were very inspirational um, to launch my wonderful journalism career, even though newspapers are dead. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, and then my other photo professor, who I adore, is gonna be there too, and some other classmates. So I figured since I have this humongous arm and I cannot, hike, mountain bike, or road trip, or do anything like extensive or extraneous, um, I have to uh, I have to just do something else. So because I don't want to sit around for the next three days, I'm going to fly to Indiana. So I have to fly Spirit through Orlando. I have about a three hour layover in Orlando, and then I go on to Indiana. So the weather should be pretty good. I'm also going to go visit Tim's grave. Uh, Tim is somebody I love very, very dearly who passed away suddenly in 2009 and uh, we dated when I was in Japan actually and just the most wonderful human and um, he died in 2009. I was 30, 31 years old, 30 years old and uh, that's not something that a 30 year old can process. I, I didn't know what to do. It was life-changing though. I made a lot of really positive uh, decisions. I got out of the shit advertising agency that I was working for. I got uh, out of a lot of toxic friendships. I purged my friends list on Facebook of anybody that was just, you know, a mooch or just not a positive person and decided that I was going to do something completely different in my life and go see the world. <laughs> so um, live for the legacy. So he's in um, North Vernon, Indiana. So I'm going to drive down there. So I have rental car, hotel. I've got my flight. I've got the dinner tomorrow night on Friday. It's Thursday right now. It's about 9 a.m. I'm going to go drive to the parking spot at the airport and then uh, get on my flight about noon. So it's going to be a long day. I'm not going to get into Indiana until about or Indianapolis until about 10 p.m. Um, so the, the hotel's right next to the airport. So luckily everything's pretty close. The uh, college is only like 30 minutes from the airport, um, but it'll be nice to go back. It's kind of like an impromptu, didn't plan this trip kind of trip. So uh, this should be fun. And yeah, so I'm um, gonna go see everybody and I need to go get some new Franklin College t-shirts. And the college has been really updated. And of course, when I was there, we were developing photos by hand with chemicals and we were putting our newspaper together with a glue stick and a pair of scissors and now everything's computerized and actually the um, I think the degree now is like multimedia journalism which we didn't learn any computer classes when we were a journalism student we only learned like uh, one uh, page design class uh, like a magazine production um, but now I think they learn more of the like digital stuff and I remember it being handed a digital camera which had a gigantic five and a half inch floppy disk that you put in and I only had like 12 frames. And I was like, what is this? I'm like, no, give me a film camera. So I did film photography for journalism and travel until about 2005. Like I was old school film camera. I didn't actually get a digital camera, a proper one, like a DSLR until probably around 2007. So I did a lot of stock photography for, um, and I'll talk about all my career stuff in a different video, all my jobs before van life. Um, but yeah, so I did a lot of um, travel writing, travel research, helped populate Google back in the day when most places didn't have websites. That was, a, I'll explain more about that job. That was, that was my most fun job. And I went to 40 countries while living in Japan. So I gotta go over a track here. Ow. Um, I went to 40 countries while I lived in Japan for four years and it was fantastic. So I'll talk about all that later, but for now I'm heading to the airport. Should be a pretty easy flight. It'll be a long day. It's uh, two and a half hours to Orlando, three hour away, two and a half hours to Indianapolis. And then I have to go back that way to come back. Uh, and 
unfortunately there's no direct flights to Indianapolis like when I went to San Diego I had to go through Las Vegas every time um, but I've flown Spirit a lot this year obviously going back and forth to California um, but I need to rest humonga hand so I can't be uh, mountain biking I was gonna go finish off the last six state parks in Texas next week but I'm not gonna risk it because I've got some pretty pretty deep incisions in my hand and I really don't want to have a stitch burst while I'm in the middle of like you know the state park down in Brownsville um, but yeah so this will be fun super excited all right battling the Houston traffic to get out get the hell out of Dodge <laughs> so anyway okay so yeah I haven't seen actually most of these people for 23 years and the last time I was at the college was when I went back to go uh, do, a pre do a presentation and then Tim's parents picked me up and drove me down to North Vernon to go see Tim's, uh, Tim's resting place and I'm not religious I don't do well with death and burial and stuff but uh, I'll talk more when I'm when I'm there I'll talk more about my experience of um, visiting the grave I couldn't even get on the plane and go to the funeral I was so upset and I just I went to the airport my friend took me to the airport and I just burst out into tears I just couldn't stop crying I'm like I can't get on the plane and so I sent flowers and it took about a year before I was able to get out there and finally you know go see go see him so I'm glad I went when I went I did a presentation for my college uh, for the journalism class and this is the recording that they sent me after I went there and I just it just made me just warm and fuzzy Hi, Jenny. This is Ray Begovich. Thank you very much for coming to speak to my class. It was wonderful and inspiring, and we were delighted you took time for us. Hi, Jenny. This is Amy Fox. We'd like to thank you for your presentation. We really enjoyed um, getting to meet you and learning a little bit about your job, and we loved your dress. Hey, Jenny. This is Kyle. just want to thank you again for coming. Uh, we really appreciated it and learned a lot. Hi, Jenny. This is Jamie Hornet. Um, I'd like to thank you for... Um, coming to speak to us. Uh, we learned a lot and uh, more than we learned from Ray about advertising. Hi Jenny, this is Katie Coffin. Thanks so much for returning to FC Campus and taking the time to talk to us. Hi Jenny, this is Morgan Greer. Just want to say thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and talking to our class. We learned a lot. I was just so, uh, I just loved the college and it was the only one I applied to. Um, I, I just, I'm so happy that I went there. Uh, but I'll talk more about like how I found the college and stuff when I'm actually there. But um, so yeah, so heading to the airport now and this should be a good, good two days. So yeah, I'll be back on Saturday morning and then Mother's Day on Sunday with Harriet. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good couple days. Okay, see you on the flip side. I've made it to Orlando and it's warm and the ceiling is low so I have to go to gate 8. I'm hungry and I need something bland because I felt nauseous that whole flight. I never ever get motion sickness so um, but I was at the very very back of the plane. I've never sat that far back before in my life so I'm going to figure out where I can get some food maybe a pretzel or something and then yeah just relax for two hours and then get on the plane. So I'm looking for food and carrying my humonga brilla. <laughs> Okay, these are my options. I've got on the border Mexican, Starbucks, uh, Candy Shop, Cold Stone, La Madeleine, um, Burger King. So probably La Madeleine. I'm gonna go look at the souvenir shop as well. So my flight is delayed by seven hours and this very nice couple gave me a free pass to the lounge. So I'm gonna hang out here for a little bit and plug in my phone and sit down, figure out what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm in the lounge and they have all this food. <laughs> so I had a salad and the sandwich. Um, my hand is okay, actually. Um, it's 7.30, my flight is actually gonna be taking off around 
11 p.m., not at 1 in the morning. So I will get into Indianapolis about 1.30 a.m. And I'll just go straight to the hotel and then I will go back in the morning and pick up my rental car. So that's the plan instead of waiting because there'll be no one at the Avis desk when I get into Indianapolis. So that's kind of what I'll do. I'm so tired and I need the restroom and the restroom is being cleaned right now. Okay. Okay, I'm in the restroom. So let me explain what happened. So my flight was supposed to have a three hour layover in Orlando and I was supposed to leave at 7 or board the plane at 7.30, leave at like 8.15. Um, but then the flight was delayed um, due to the plane broken or something, whatever plane was coming in. So I turned around and I was like, okay, what am I gonna do for like seven hours? Cause then it wasn't gonna take off until, actually, hang on, I'm gonna be demonetized. All right, let me go somewhere quieter. Okay, I'm in the gaming room. Okay, so my flight was delayed and it was gonna take off at midnight and then get into Indianapolis at like 2.30 in the morning, which meant I wouldn't be able to pick up my rental car. So I was on the phone with Priceline and Avis and I decided that if I get in at 2 a.m., I'll Uber to the hotel and then I'll Uber back in the morning at like 11.30 and pick up the car. Um, but now the flight's taking off at 11 p.m. So I've been sitting in this lounge that this very nice family gave me their guest pass. It's otherwise it's like $50. So I've just been like, drinking some water and some tea and just kind of resting my humonga hand um, and just waiting. And so now it's like 7.30 p.m. and I'm gonna be going out to the uh, terminal. Um, but yeah, just kind of hanging out. Everyone's plugged in with their um, devices and uh, it's very slow charging though, unfortunately. I've been plugging my phone in for the last hour or so and it's like not charging. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, just kind of hanging out and everyone's chilling and drinking wine and waiting for their flight. So much nicer than sitting in the terminal for seven hours. Um, but it's good. So I will take off at 11. So I will go out of here about 9.30, go to the gate, which is just outside. Uh, but yeah, this family, because I was like, where's the USO? And they said, oh, you have to take the, the train to the other side, the other terminal, because we're in gate areas, we're not in a terminal. So they said, okay, go out to the other terminal to the USO. And I'm like, there's no guarantee they'll let me into the USO, because some USOs are active duty only and some are veterans like me and active duty so i didn't want to go to the other side of orlando airport to be turned around and come back and so when i went to so the spirit uh, counter told me to come in this lounge area and i came in and they said oh, i was 50 dollars, and i said well i'm only going to be here for a few hours and they said uh this family is like here we'll let you in so it was really really nice it's been nice i've been nice to sit and relax in a nice comfortable chair put my feet up and eat some salad and drink some tea and just relax. Uh, I'm still really nauseous from the surgery, which happens when you get put under. Um, for a few days, you might feel really sick. So I feel really sick. So I've just been trying to eat like a, like a teeny tiny little sandwich. Um, and I got some extra bananas and uh, drank some ginger ale on the plane. So if I get in about 1.30 to Indianapolis now, I'll just Uber. 10 minutes to the um, hotel and then um, yeah I think it's like 10 minutes 10 minutes to the hotel and then I will uh, go back in the morning and get the rental car so that's good then I can sleep and shower because it'll take me a while everything takes five times longer now because I don't have an extra hand <laughs> so my humonger hand um, thankfully TSA didn't ream me because I had the, um, TSA pre-check so they just let me right through didn't even have to take my shoes off um, but I do have my medical records in case they need to see that this is not like hiding anything. This is actually, I actually have staples in my hand, unfortunately. So yeah. So anyway, this is a little gaming room for the kids. And uh, this is nice. Oh, definitely, it's definitely worth $50. Even if you're here for a few hours. Um, free drinks, <laughs> including alcoholic. Um, so I'm just going to go back and sit down and relax. I didn't bring my computer or anything on this trip, so I'm only gone for a day. Um, but it'll be nice once I get there, I'm gonna sleep so hard and wake up at like 10, shower, leave the hotel at 11, go Uber back to the airport, get my rental car, drive an hour and a half to see Tim's grave, and then turn around and go an hour up to Franklin. I don't have to be at the, um, at Franklin until, well, the dinner's at six, so I want to get to Franklin by four, so I can go to the bookstore and buy some things. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, and just kind of walk around. I assume classes end on a Friday pretty early. So I'm hoping the bookstore is still open when I get there. If I get there earlier, that's fine. Maybe I'll pop my head in and say hi to some professors. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the dinner if I could ever get out of Florida. Anyway, not that Florida is a bad place. The last time I flew Spirit here was actually 
um, with Harriet, and then I also flew here when I went on my 40th birthday cruise in 2018. Um, we flew, I flew to Fort Lauderdale, but the last time I flew to Orlando was when I took Harriet to Disney World. And here's some photos from that. It was really fun. She didn't care for any of the rides. She was three years old and she just wanted to see the parades and the meet and greets and stuff, which was really fun. And then grandma came with us for one day or two days, I think. And it was right between Halloween and Christmas. So overnight they changed the decorations from Halloween to Christmas, like from the Monday to the Tuesday that we were here. That was really fun. It was in 2015. So. In the meantime, I would like to get out of Orlando and go to Indian Indianapolis, actually. Okay, I'm out of the Club MCO. MCO is Orlando, and it's dark. <laughs> so it's actually a really chill airport. Everyone's kind of chill. So I'm going to go to uh, Gate 22. I don't need anything else. I've drank enough fluids and eaten enough food, so I'm fine. I even paid $10 for a sandwich, which didn't agree with me so it didn't stay down so I had actually sat over here for like 30 minutes and then I thought you know I'll go see if they have a USO and then they told me that the flight was delayed by seven hours so then they let me in that lounge over there which was great um, but that sandwich did not stay down so thankfully once I had some ginger ale I was able to eat something um, but I really just want to go to my hotel and go to sleep <laughs> so now I'm gonna walk all the way down here and hopefully uh, the flight will take off at 9.48, fingers crossed. So I'm way at the back of the plane. I'm hoping to get a seat up front. Would be nice because my hand is hurting. <laughs> okay, so this is turning into the FAA shutdown video all over again, although it's not as bad. Uh, like I said, everyone's real chill here. So um, we are waiting to get on the plane, hopefully by 10 p.m. And all of the flights were kind of delayed and backed up on this end of the terminal. Um, but yeah, so they moved me up to the toward the front of the plane, which is nice, so I can get off the plane first, and uh, or marginally first, and get my uh, go to the hotel. And I will still pick up my rental car tomorrow. So Avis said that they um, they hold the reservation for 24 hours. So even if I don't pick it up at 11 p.m., I will pick it up at 11 a.m. tomorrow. So I'm good. I just need to go sleep. I'm tired, and I do want a good night's rest because I won't sleep tomorrow night because I have to drop the rental car off at well leave the dinner at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. drive to the Indianapolis airport drop the rental car off by 2 a.m. and then wait at the airport till 6 a.m. to get on the plane so I'm not sleeping at all tomorrow um, but anyway so I'll sleep on the plane right now when I you know for a couple hours at least I'm tired enough but yeah so I think uh, overall an interesting experience in Orlando All right, we're getting on the plane. I'm in the front, first one on. I'm the only one on the plane. <laughs> I'm just kidding, first one on the plane. I'm so tired, I'm asleep. It is a full flight though, unfortunately, so. Okay, four people. I have made it to Indianapolis, and of course the Indianapolis 500. Everything is closed, and I'm just running now kind of to ground transportation. Welcome to the racing capital of the world. Welcome to Indianapolis, also known as the greatest college that I've been to, or well, the only college I've been to. Okay, I'm supposed to go down the escalators and across the street. So here's the taxis and pickup, and here's ground transportation, Uber and Lyft. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here. Hopefully there's Uber. It's like five minutes away, it says. 20 bucks to get to my hotel worth every Frickin' penny. Sorry for it being bouncy. I'm trying to hold everything in one hand because I still got humongous arm. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot wait for this cast to get off. So tomorrow morning I'll come back here about, I don't know, 10 and pick up my car from Avis, which is down over there. It's across the uh across the way. I don't think anyone's in there. It said well the parking lot is open 24 hours to drop off, but I think the counter opens at seven so i'll come back and my uber is five minutes away okay it's about 10 a.m i'm back at the airport and the rental counters are open so this is avis and i'm gonna get my car so this is good so i'll have time actually to go eat lunch with my friend from school so that will be nice i think we're getting japanese food i'm like good because i can only use one hand so chopsticks are fine Otherwise, if I try to eat like a proper British person, I'll just be stabbing my food with my knife. So this is my car. I have a Kia Soul. 
and there were some scratches on the front. The lady over there came out and noted them, but they've put little white marks, so they already know about them. Uh, J-E-T is my initials. That's my initials, so what a coincidence. And Minnesota, <laughs> so, all right, so Kia Soul. I actually did a four, no, $2 million uh, advertising campaign for Kia back in 2012 when I was pregnant with Harriet. And that was fun. We were like, what's soulful? And we can do with the car. And so we did a boys to men concert <laughs> in Chicago. It was like the most like unrelated thing. We had a hamster driving the Kia Soul or something. And then it was just funny. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And I'm hormonal and pregnant. So I think this is super funny. Okay, let me go to North Vernon. Um, I'm gonna go stop on the way and get something for breakfast. I just had a banana. Obviously the hotel I stayed in was not a place where you can actually like eat anything because it's like shit hotel, but it was good enough for me. So, okay, let's go in. Okay, so I have my USB cord, which is like 10 feet long. And then I always bring my own uh, multiple different versions of the um, like things to put the phone on. So I have this one, which could go on the windshield, but I don't need it because I can put one here and that should suffice. And that way I have my GPS. This is nice. It kind of reminds me of the car I had in Japan. This was the car I had in Japan. It was a Daihatsu move. Okay, so yeah, let me just adjust the seat and the vanity mirror. Make sure that I can like see and not die on the freeway. It is a big moment on this drive. I got my first bug splat on the window. You can't really see it, but it's there. So not as bad as Texas. I'd have every bug on my window right now. Okay, so I'm about 43 minutes from the cemetery. This is the worst road, ouch. Um, making good time. I'm gonna go meet my college friend for lunch. And yeah, that'll be nice. We're getting sushi. So I never drove in Indiana. This is the first time I've ever driven in Indiana, I think. No, 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 when I was here in 2013, I drove. Uh, but I've never driven the van. So eventually I'll come up here and do the Midwest trip and go up to Indiana Dunes, which is the national park in Indiana. I should have gone when I was in Chicago, but it was so cold and gloomy and gross and rainy that I just, I was like, I just need to go south. him so much. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> it was like I'm not gonna cry but oh he was so awesome and so kind and so nice. Okay I'm just gonna just spend some time and then I'm gonna head up to Franklin. I, I don't do well with death. <sighs> god I miss him. Okay, I'm gonna come back um, when I come back with the van. It's just so surreal, you know? I just spoke to him and then I got the phone call from his mom that he had passed away. August 24th, 2009. <sighs> okay, I will come back with Prudence properly and we will hang out and really just spend more time, but I need to go back to Franklin and I love you Tim. Just, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do well with that. I'm not good at with it. Okay, I finally put my little thing on there. Yeah, I was trying not to get choked up. Um, I have this event to go to tonight, so but it's never easy and I don't do well with death. Um, I don't understand it because I'm not, not religious or anything. So, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't like it. That's all I can say, it. I don't like it. The rental car is pretty good. Um, so I've got 25 minutes to get to Franklin and then I'm gonna have sushi with my college friend, Tiffany. So if you would like to host exchange students from other countries, she's your gal. So um, if I can, I'll put the link to where you can contact and host exchange students from Europe. Um, so she's hosted a bunch of different um, like host children and like from all different countries and she's learning Hungarian, which I'm a quarter Hungarian. My, my grandfather was Hungarian. My last name is a Hungarian last name. 
but I don't speak any Hungarian, I speak Japanese. Um, so it'll be great, it'll be great to go up there and um, then I'm going to go drive around, it's, hopefully it's not going to rain, the clouds have come in, as you can see. Um, but I'm going to drive around the campus and uh, go to the bookstore and then probably just chill for a bit um, before the event. Uh, I think I need to be there like at 5.30. So right now it's, uh, it's I'm gonna get to lunch at one. So yeah, so it's a pretty pretty good day. Um, I almost went to the wrong cemetery because there's three Bear Creek cemeteries, and um, so I called the funeral home just to double check. So I was like, I don't think I'm going the right way, um, but I found him, and yeah. So I spent you know quite a bit of time there. Um, of course, well, as soon as I got out of the car, I just started like choking up. Um, it's just. You know, just I don't wish that on anybody, but he was such a great person. I miss him a lot. It, um, does not get easier at all. And when you're 30 years old and you have to process it, and I lost my dad when I was 23, so the, I thought that was, you know, okay, I've got to like adult now, and I had to deal with all his belongings and, uh, you know, just body and stuff like that. And it was just, I was in Japan and he was in the Middle East. So that was not that was not um, not a great experience, um, but I had some very helpful people. The embassies helped and everything, but you know I just I don't know. I don't really have any words. Lunch was awesome, and it was really good to catch up. We had sushi, and it was super yummy. So now I'm heading to the college campus, which I haven't been to since 2011. It's so pretty. I visited this campus. It was the only school I applied to. I had no money for school and I was at a college fair and um, with a friend of mine who's like, my dad's paying for everything. I was like, oh, whatever. So I plopped a squat next to the Franklin College booth. No one was talking to the, the lady there. So I said, okay, I'll you know talk to her. And um, it was amazing. It was like, um, she uh, she started telling me about how they have a journalism scholarship and a journalism school and I said, wait, so you mean to tell me that I can actually go to college and get paid to be a journalist and learn journalism and graduate with a journalism degree? I'm like, where is this magical place? And she said, it's in Franklin, Indiana. I'm like, where's Indiana? And she flew me out and I just fell in love with it. And I stayed here for four days uh, in the senior dorms and went to classes and a party and everything and over to Indianapolis proper um, for the night as well for dinner. And there it is. There's my beautiful school. Aw, that is really pretty. All right, this is, okay, I'm gonna do a tour. It's raining, but anyway, this is the Franklin, the Johnson Center for Fine Arts, that's new. This is the old fitness center where I used to teach yoga. That was fun. That was really fun. I'm surprised it's still there. Um, these are the dorms, that's Klein. And uh, that's Klein Hall, that's the men's dorm. On the other side behind me is the uh, sports fields. Um, and then over here we've got Hamilton Library where I lived basically all four years. And then that now connects to the student center. And then the Spurlock Center where I used to work out is right there. It's a very small school, there's only 900 students. So um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go drive around to where my dorm building was. The entire campus is basically like one giant city block. Um, but anyway, over here is the Dietz Center. So that's where I lived for two years. And next to it is the Elsie Hall. But I lived in the original Elsie Hall, not the, uh, the new one. Um, over here is, I think that's the Spurlock Center. Oh, that's the, uh, the um, Lilly Campus Center, Napolitan, Napo Napolitan, I'm sorry, Napolitan uh, Student Center. And um, that's where the cafeteria is at, where we used to steal the trays and go sledding in between these two buildings. And that's the uh, LC Hall. That's the freshman sophomore dorms. And I lived in I lived here for two years when it was the old building. And they also have the sorority houses. So in uh, Indiana, women can't live in a fraternity a sorority house. They have to like you can't have five unrelated women living in the same house because then it would be considered a brothel or some bullshit like that. Um, and then we have some of the um, fraternity houses. So fraternities can have houses, but sororities can't. That's Franklin College. I want to take a picture of the sign. There's the SAE house. <laughs> Do not have anything good to say about SAE house. Anyway, there's a uh, Johnson Deets. That's the uh, apartments. And then, yeah. So and then the journalism building's at the end. So I'm going to go park in the proper parking lot. 
So I'm just gonna go take a picture quickly of the sign. So that's the Phi Delta house, Phi Delta Theta. And the KDR house is over here somewhere. And then the Lambda Chi, Lambda Kappa, whatever. And that's Old Main. That's our main um, building for the school, for the um, classes. And next to it is Shirk. And there's Ben Franklin who has gained a significant amount of weight because people just would keep painting over him over and over and they would spray paint him. So he's got about probably 150,000 coats of paint. And there's Old Main, beautiful. And there's Franklin College again, and there's the journalism building, which is where I lived for four years. That's awesome. It's really cool being back. Oh, such good memories. Okay, so I need to park, uh, and this is new, the Johnson Center for Fine Arts is a new building. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. So I'm gonna go to the um, student center and go to the uh, bookstore and go park in the Hamilton lot. And I still have like two and a half hours before I need to be at the banquet. So anyway, yay, Franklin College. And our, our fight song was like, F-F-R-E-N, F-R-E-N, K-L-A-N, go Franklin! <laughs> it's like, shut up. <laughs> okay, so I'm not a student. <laughs> I look like a student. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go in the student center and go to the bookstore, I need the restroom too. So this is the bookstore I used to work in here, um, but let's see, let me get some sweatshirts. So this is the cafeteria all brand new since when I was here and some other cafes and I got some t-shirts and I'm gonna walk up the main mall area and it's a Friday so it's not very busy right now so okay over there is the chapel and that's where they would have speakers and convocations and things um, it's a Baptist college but it's not like a religious college that's the student center there's Ben Franklin he was a journalist I think they changed it. I don't remember him having the Declaration of Independence. That's a new one. Um, that's the Science Center where I took two classes, Biology and um, Environmental Science. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is the main mall. So this is literally how big the campus is. At the very end over there is the Old Main and uh, Shirk Hall Journalism School. And then down here at the other end is Elsie Hall and Deet Center. And that's it, the entire campus basically. And Mr. Ben Franklin. So this is a suitcase college, meaning like most weekends everybody leaves. Yes, I walked up and down here, back and forth, trying to get to class within three minutes. Um, so I think the dinner is going to be in the student center. There's the library that hasn't changed. Barnes Hall that hasn't changed. Very windy right now, but it's beautiful though. Definitely spring. A little rainy. And these students were born like 2023. So they were born after 2000, which just blows my mind. <laughs> it's like, I'm so old. I'm not a student, people. There's a campus tour happening. So that's the Dietz, uh, Johnson Dietz. That's the apartment. So I think there's like four people in each apartment. And I think we only had a couple hundred people on campus. A lot of people lived off campus or commuted as well. And then there's Klein Hall, no, it's Hoover Hall, Hoover and Klein, that's the men's dorm. That's co-ed. Deet Center is co-ed, Elsie Hall is all female. And the Pulliam School of Journalism is to the left and Old Main is to the right. Let me see if I can get into both buildings. So this is a changing time. Uh, welcome to Old Main, to gain access, please call the faculty or staff person who is expecting you or campus security to be escorted into the building. That wasn't like that in the 90s. So I'm gonna to go to the journalism building. I don't need to go to Old Main. Everything is, uh, all classes are over. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm surprised the bookstore didn't have more stuff. When I was there, we had tons and tons and tons. It was like a stationary store, but I guess you can just order stuff online. That's what the guy at the bookstore said. So let me see if I can get into the journalism building. This is funny. I live there all the time. This is nice. Um, we we're supposed to have like a wall that was supposed to be built with our uh, student gift 23 years ago. No one ever built it, so I don't know what happened there. So um, I'm going to keep it short because if 
I tried to, to, to talk about my 38 year career here, you'd be here till Tuesday. And I'm well aware of certain um, spouses that are here because they've been dragged along. <laughs> <laughs> So this brings back memories, walking out of Shirk Hall, out of the journalism building at midnight or the early hours of the morning. That was super fun. I didn't really do any videos or anything of the event, but I did see my professors, as you can see. So um, Joel Kramer and Ann Barton were retiring and then my mentor advisor, newspaper pro professor, reporting professor, um, Bill Bridges, uh, retired years ago, but he showed up and it was awesome. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, Basically the end of every day was me walking across campus at midnight, going back to my dorm at the other end, literally like two blocks away, um, or working security, locking up all the buildings, uh, or teaching yoga over there at the fitness center, walking back. This is really, this is such a good day. I am so happy that I got to come back for just, you know, just one day and see everyone. So yeah, we had an after party in Shirk Hall in Journalism School. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna come back with the van and, and just do a proper, you know, kind of road trip and spend a little bit more time here. Um, maybe come back and do some presentations, I don't know. But yeah, the, the journalism students, it was really great because you had the current students, you had uh, students that didn't even win awards that showed up to the event too, which was great. And then you had um, <laughs> the college kids. I'm good, how are you? Yeah. Those kids were like, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm good. It's past your bedtime. Go to sleep. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, it was, uh, it was really fun to just talk to like people from my era. So like students that were like older than me and younger than me that um, were my friends, well, still my friends. And we all talked about, you know, kind of like the good old days. So talking with the current students about how life was back in the 90s was really cool. So yeah, so I'm going to walk back over to Hamilton Library to my rental car, which I think is over here. There's a lot of people out at freaking midnight, so it's really fun. Oh, there's a Jason. It's so funny. This is nice. This is great. So, all right, I'm going to go to the airport and then stay awake until 5 a.m. and get on the plane. <laughs> and I got my Franklin Grizzly shirt on and I'm gonna go hopefully go through TSA and then pop a squat and sleep for a little bit that was fun okay I'm tired and welcome to the racing capital of the world so I need to go to TSA pre-check which is this way and it's closed so I don't know what time they open there's a Starbucks there's uh, race car, McDonald's. Um, I don't know what time it opens. It's like 2 a.m. So I am wide awake. I'm on adrenaline. Okay, so I snagged a couch <laughs> and I'm gonna sleep for an hour. There's people still coming off the planes, but TSA doesn't open until like 3.30 in the morning and it's already like 2 a.m. So I'm gonna sleep right now, <laughs> right here. All these other people are sleeping in Indianapolis. Thank you for having couches. This is awesome. I've slept in so many airports around the world, but this is this is amazing. So yay, and my Franklin College t-shirt. <laughs> so, and my humongous arm. So yeah, so I'm so tired. So I'm gonna get an hour of sleep at least, and then sleep on the plane for three hours, then one hour layover in Orlando, and sleep on the plane again, and then go home and sleep. <laughs> so easy day. All right, good night. Okay, I'm the first through TSA this morning and the only one in the airport. And I think I go to A something something. That's pretty cool. They've got these like cool x-ray machines that look like sleep pods. They may actually be sleep pods. <laughs> so, and of course the Indy 500. Goodbye Indianapolis, I'll miss you. I've always, always liked the city. Always loved it. Really, really cool town. But when I drive up from Houston, I'm gonna be going through uh, Louisville 
and up through Indianapolis and then up to the um, Indiana Dunes National Park and then beyond that. So it's very cold and everything is closed. Welcome to Indy. There we go. So now I'm gonna go to my gate and put on my sweatshirt because it has like glitter on it, like uh, sequins. So I can't wear it when I go through TSA because they think it's metal. So I'm freezing right now. I wish something was open. I want like a hot cup of tea. Star sucks, you're not open. But I'm literally the only one in the airport right now. That's pretty cool. Okay, let me figure out my gate. So I may actually be the only person, the only passenger at least. There's a couple cleaning crew. Um, so Harriet used to love this walkway. Um, oh, I gotta find the video. There's a video of her with her grandmother at the airport when she was like, I don't know, maybe a year old or 16 months old. Yeah. Look how fun that is. Grab her, grab her, grab her. Yay! Oh, she wants to go again. You want to go again? No, you want me to come with you? Okay. And she just was like going over and over again on the little walkway. She she absolutely loved it. I miss those days where like things that aren't really like toys or stuff like just you know, kids just can spend all day just playing with like a piece of string. Okay, I'm going to Orlando, unfortunately. Spirit, A20 on time. Okay. Ooh, sushi. <laughs> it's like a gas station sushi. This reminds me when I was in China, like the airport was just like massive. It was like 10,000 million miles in the Guangzhou airport. I don't know why it was so big, but it had all these like really cool restaurants. Um, okay, uh, I really need something hot to drink and something to eat, actually. Uh, yeah, I've kind of been on this weird sleep schedule of, like, no sleep. And then the dinner was actually pretty good. It was, like, chicken and rice, and uh, the dessert was kind of interesting. It was, like, a chocolate mousse with, like, fruit, but it actually kind of worked. And then a nice salad to start with. Um, and then the sushi lunch was absolutely delicious. Really, really enjoyed the sushi. So I'll definitely go back to Kumo, which was the name of the sushi place in Franklin. Um, yeah, I actually am actually getting sad. I'm actually missing, hang on a minute. Yeah, I'm actually getting sad that I'm leaving Indiana. You know, I just, I flew in and out of college the whole entire time I was in school. And I don't, didn't really appreciate, I don't think, you know, just the fact that like I could go, you know, go home, come back and then graduate and not come back for, you know, 10 years and then not come back for 13 more years. So definitely need to make more trips uh, since a lot of my college friends stuck around the area and I have the van. So, all right, so here's A20. Here's my gate and I'm literally the only person. So I'm gonna sit on these very dysfunctional furniture chairs, finish charging my phone. Oh, there's couches, holy crap. Thank you, Indianapolis for having couches. <laughs> but look, I'm like the only one, the only person in this airport right now. And it is uh, 3.30 in the morning, Orlando, on time, 6 a.m. I slept actually for an hour and a half just now on that couch. And that was fantastic. So I needed it, I needed that sleep. I'm gonna sleep a little bit more on this couch over here and then um, get on the plane, sleep for two and a half hours. And then I have a one hour layover, literally get off the plane, get on the next plane. I'm really hoping, I've never had that tight connection before in a really long time. So I'm hoping that I don't have any issues because I really just want to get home and I'll be home by 11 a.m. Then I have to drive myself an hour home. So there's the runway out there. Oh, I'm getting teary eyed. I want to miss you, Indiana. Oh my God, I didn't realize how much I miss you until I'm here. You know, it's like when you eat like a really, really good dessert, you're like, I really did not realize how much I miss creme brulee until I was literally eating creme brulee. Okay, this is my sleeping area of choice. And um, they have these like little tables you can move. Just for perspective, this is how much I'm gonna wedge myself in, the size of a large golfing umbrella, which I brought it with me thinking it was gonna rain. It actually didn't rain, so. Um, but I'm glad I had it because I've got to keep humongous arm. Uh, completely dry.
I am finally back in Houston and that was a very bumpy landing but happy to be home. I'm gonna go take the shuttle to the parking spot, grab my car and I am out, out cold when I get home. I'm sleeping the rest of the day and then I have to quickly run to the store and get food for Harriet for tomorrow but I need to rest. I'm done traveling, sitting, riding, everything else. So, okay, bye-bye TSA. Thank you for TSA PreCheck.